raising the minimum wage. Joining us now from Washington, D.C., Senator Joe Manchin of West Virginia. Senator, good to have you on the show today. Good to be with you, Mike. Okay, so what... what, 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 yeah, what, what, you, what, what, what How do we not get um, some sort of agreement on raising the minimum wage? I mean, we all got to agree on that, right? Do we yeah, really want to pay people so little? Let me just say the 725 is, is not acceptable. It's a joke. I, mean, and I would like to think that most of the, most of the senators and most con congressmen and congresswomen believe that. If that's the case, then can we find a path forward? I'm willing to sit down. I'm going to continue to sit down with my colleagues on both sides of the aisle and find if we can find that middle ground. Well, because what, what is Joe the middle has ground? Some. He can what what, what is you. the middle ground? Because we had Tom Coburn on uh, last know. hour, and Tom, you know, is a dear friend of mine. But dear Tom believes, like a lot of Republicans believe, that you should keep it to the states, let them decide it. But I think with 75% of Americans supporting an increase in the minimum wage, there's probably a deal involving Keystone and a few other things Republicans want. Where can't we meet halfway? Well, we're going to sit down, Joe, and see if we can keep it clean. If we're really concerned about people being raised out of poverty, it's, how many people would be raised out of poverty? Let me just give it to you this way. If we raise the minimum wage, uh, we can lift people off of food stamps. That saves three to four billion dollars a year. So for my Republican friends, that's pretty cost effective. On the other hand, it gives people some spending power, which is going to be basically helping the economy. If the minimum wage in 1968 was $1.60, just by inflation, without any politics involved, it would be $10.68 today. Now, 1010 is not acceptable to our Republican friends. Is there a pathway forward? In West Virginia, the legislature this past session raised it to 875. So in January 1 of 2015, it goes up to $8. January 1 of 2016, 875. I'm proud of that. If we can do it in West Virginia, Joe, surely most states around the country, and I, Tom is my dear friend, Tom Coburn, and I understand where Tom's coming from, but we've got to set some minimum standards here, and then hopefully we can get it to where inflation can take over and we don't have to keep playing politics with it. Hey, Senator. But if I'm sorry, it's Donnie Deutsch. Uh, Republican argument, and I'd like you to refute it or, or, or respond to it, is, hey, ideologically, yes, I want to get people out of poverty, but this is going to cost jobs. That the economics are is we raise it a buck and a half, people are going to lose their jobs, correct or incorrect? Well, Donnie, basically it's been raised in the last four or five years twice and under a Republican president and a Democrat president, and we didn't have a job loss. We can't attribute a job loss to that. I've had some of my Republican friends say, yeah, but this is a bigger gap. This is a bigger jump at three dollars. Then I've had my friend Mark Warner who's been looking at it and say, well, you know what? If three years is a little bit too much, five years shows there's hardly any job lost by GAO. So is there a way forward, Donnie? I would like to think that if you believe that 725 is non-acceptable and you're willing to move forward, put politics aside and sit down and try to help people, and that's what we're going to do. We've done it before when they shut down government. We got about 14 of us together, seven Ds and, seven, and six Rs uh, and one independent. And we've done it again with the student loans. We're going to try to do it again here. Right, Senator, Thomas. Uh, when you talk about West Virginia and the example that's happening in your home state, we have states like Louisiana that do not have a state minimum wage. They are dependent upon the federal, min federal minimum wage to set that standard. So in the back rooms and where these discussions take place off camera, where is that figure that is palatable to both sides and that is politically feasible that's a winner? Let me tell you what I have heard. And first of all, Democrats, we, first of all, I applaud Tom Harkin for what he's done, all the work he's put into this. He's his heart and soul. He's in it with his heart and soul and every fiber of his body. Now, with that being said, a lot of my friends on the Republican side have said, you know, where the president first came out and was saying 925. If that's where they want to sit down and talk, let's talk about that and see how many votes we can get. 100% of nothing is nothing. Mm -hmm. Right now, we've got nothing. We've got Democrats, we've all voted for 1010, and we have Bob Corker vote for 1010 to get the conversation started. So if that's the case, and 925 might be, they might say, well, at least that's where the president, can't we go and start there? I'm willing to sit down and talk about anything that will raise it off of seven and a quarter. All right, there you go. <laughs> Did you hear it? It's on the table. Senator Manchin, thank you so much. It's great to have you on the show, as it's always. It's always good to be with you all. Thank Love you. Love having you, Joe. Thank you Thanks, so much. Joe.